Senekiram Dohanian went from being a penniless immigrant to an internationally acclaimed entomologist. He was at the forefront of biological control of insects, and throughout his 40-year career he conducted groundbreaking research that would pave the way for future scientists. Although he lived through two world wars, he himself was at war with insects that were a threat to America's food supply and agricultural industry. He wasn't just fighting to protect crops, but also to save people's lives, either from starvation or deadly diseases. He has had a huge impact on the field of biological control today. Senekiram, or Seni, was born in 1889 in Malatia, a town in eastern Turkey. In 1895, when Seni was six years old, Turkish officials began a campaign to exterminate Christian Armenians who were living there. Dohanian's father and grandfather were among the approximately 200,000 Armenians killed in eastern Turkey in a two-year period. In 1903, Dohanian and his mother and two brothers left Malatia, traveled to America, and settled in Somerville, Massachusetts. Seni entered public grammar school at the age of 14 to learn to read and write English. By 1915, 12 years later, he had received a bachelor's degree from Tufts University and a master's degree from Harvard. At the time, only 3% of Americans had college degrees. Dohanian was soon employed by the U.S. Department of Agriculture as an entomologist with the Gypsy Moth Lab until he enlisted in the U.S. Army in 1917. Dohanian was stationed at Kelly Field Aviation Camp, where he served as camp entomologist, a critical position because disease-carrying insects could have endangered the 250,000 soldiers who were trained there. The camp, which was hastily built, had poor drainage, providing ideal habitat for mosquitoes, which carried malaria and yellow fever. Dohanian directed a biological control project using a technique known as cultural control, which is done by removing habitat, in this case the mosquitoes' breeding grounds. When the sanitary officer of the medical department for the air service inspected the camp in 1918, he stated, There are very few flies in the camp and no mosquitoes. Government researchers in Washington discovered that Dohanian had completely eliminated yellow fever mosquitoes in Kelly Field. Dohanian then returned to the USDA Gypsy Moth Lab and was sent to Europe in 1924 as part of the USDA's first super project in biological control. The goal was to collect parasites, or natural enemies, of the Gypsy Moth, which had been accidentally released into Massachusetts in 1869 and was wreaking havoc across the eastern United States by destroying thousands of acres of forests. Dohanian set up a laboratory in Madrid with the help of the Spanish government to study parasites of the gypsy moth. The work done in the lab was considered so important that the king and queen of Spain even visited it. One of the parasites Dohanian found while he was in Spain was a parasitic wasp, Apantelis melanosculus. Dohanian reared these parasites and shipped nearly 100,000 of them to America, where they could be released into infested areas to kill gypsy moths. During his work, however, Dohanian discovered a problem. The beneficial parasite was being attacked by parasites itself. This is a phenomenon known as hyperparasitism, which he describes in detail in his 1927 paper. This paper was possibly the most important outcome of his work on the gypsy moth. It has been cited by researchers from all over the world from the time it was written up until the present. It was important to biological control, because if the beneficial parasites are being attacked, they won't be effective against the pest. Dohanian was forced to quit studying the gypsy moth after the barbed, poisonous hairs of the moth got inside his throat and lungs. This caused lifelong asthma, which he nicknamed the Fuzz. However, this did not end Dohanian's career. He continued his fight against other insect pests, such as the European corn borer. In the 1930s, more than one-eighth of Long Island, New York was cultivated, with its chief crops being potatoes and corn. In 1923, the European corn borer was discovered infesting corn in Long Island, creating a significant economic problem of concern to the USDA. In 1927, Dohanian began his work combating this problem. He supervised the rearing of the European corn borer's natural enemies, which were sent to him from Europe and the Far East. In 1933, Dohanian released almost 70,000 of these parasites on Long Island. In his 1934 paper, The European Corn Borer on Long Island, Dohanian expressed hope that at least two of the 16 different species of the released parasites would be effective against this pest. One of these parasites was a fly named Lydella stabulans. 
17 years later, in 1951, an article in Time magazine stated, The USDA announced that one of the worst crop-eating insects, the European corn borer, is near the end of its reign of terror in U.S. cornfields. Its conqueror, a fly named Lydella stabulans. Doohanians' work had a lasting impact on corn production not only in New York, but throughout the U.S. In 1935, the USDA sent Senny to the Caribbean and South America to search for natural enemies of insects that harm sugarcane, cocoa, bananas, and coconuts. Dohanian shipped over 21,000 parasites, which included 11 different species, to Florida and Puerto Rico. Today, nearly 75 years later, four of these parasites are established in keeping crop pests under control. Near the end of the Great Depression and throughout World War II, food production was more important to the United States than ever. The USDA sent Sandy to Eugene, Oregon to establish a laboratory to help fight the insects that were destroying Oregon's filbert crops, which account for 99% of the United States' total production. These insects, which were mainly filbert worms, cost farmers vast amounts of money every year and lost revenue from rejected crops. Before Dohanian came along, filbert orchards were sprayed with lead to control pests. At the onset of World War II, lead could no longer be sprayed as it was needed for other uses, besides the fact that it was dangerous and ineffective. Dohanian was brought in to establish a better method of pest management. He would devise a biological and cultural control program that changed the filbert industry to this day. Dohanian discovered that the filbert worm larvae overwinter and prematurely dropped nuts. He found that if you removed the infested nuts from the ground before the harvest, either by picking them up or by flailing, you would have a much lower infestation rate. His discovery had a large impact on the filbert industry. In fact, 90% of filbert growers in Oregon still use methods of control that Zenny developed. I know of some growers that never ever spray. They just do their flailing at the right time of the season and they can get um, below 1% infestation. Dohanian left a lasting legacy in Oregon. In fact, filberts are currently a $50 million a year industry, which might not have come to be had it not been for his work. In the 1950s, about when Dohanian retired, biological control went out of favor as practical pesticides were invented. But in the 1970s, as people became concerned about the effects on the environment and human health, pesticides stopped being used as much, and the biological control has since started to come back. In the more recent years, and especially in the 80s and 90s and now, in this century, um, there's again a lot of interest in biological control because we realize that pesticides uh, have a lot of problems. Dohanian's work has had a major impact on biological control today. But now times are different, but research like this is just as important, if not more so, because there's a lot more pressure to not use chemical controls. Dohanian's impact was not just upon science, but also upon society. He undoubtedly saved lives in his work by ridding areas of disease-spreading insects and by discovering and implementing alternatives to using dangerous chemicals on crops. Dohanian dedicated his life to his work, and for a poor immigrant to leave such a legacy was quite an accomplishment. Because he wasn't getting rich or famous from doing this. He was just involved in it because he was passionate about uh, biological control. Although he was always very humble about his work, he knew that what he was doing was important. He just didn't realize how much his work would affect society today. <laughs>